So let's look a little bit at the the science, the structure of uh, trigger points. Well, basically, uh, a muscle is made up of uh, microscopic contractile units called sarcomeres, and these sarcomeres are like little tiny, consist of little tiny packages of proteins such as actin and myosin. Now, a muscle contracts because a sarcomere contracts. Uh, sarcomeres are like little microscopic muscles, and obviously they're little if they're microscopic, and they're like muscles within muscles. And, and these little molecular machines are probably the best example of how life is chemistry. Sarcomeres are the ultimate source of all movement, and they are powered by these mind-bogglingly, as Ingram said, this mind-bogglingly complicated molecules. And if you have complicated molecules, the potential for it to mess up uh, is always there, and it does. But by understanding the, how a sarcomere works, we can understand some of the clinical relevance of sarcomeres and how they affect or, or cause trigger points. And you can sort of understand how these, these mus little muscle knots, these little contractions, are so stubborn, why pressure often helps, why sometimes stretching doesn't help, why they make your muscles weak and heavy, just by understanding how a sort of sarcomere works. As I said, a muscle contracts because a sarcomere contracts. A, a sarcomere is made up of a, of kind of like uh, little threads. If one looks at like a forks or, or the tines of a fork on my fingers, this is like the sarcomeres sliding along each other. Another way I like to look at it is basically if we think of them so like the myosin and actin as like little hooks on velcro basically what they're doing is they're hooking and pulling along and as you can see they can get kind of stuck and what can happen is you might get like a little kink in the in the muscle so if you look here the muscle is kind of contracted and a little kink in the middle and that little kink is basically the, the sarcomere. And the problem is, is that this little kink or this little knot of muscle over contracted sarcomeres will just keep on producing waste products because it's like a micro cramp and it just keeps on producing sort of waste products which sort of bathe it and change the acidity in the area. And this can uh, affect other sarcomeres. And so then you get this kind of vicious cycle that goes on where you have this like, nasty little kink of sarcomeres and maybe another one beside it and then into a next fibre beside it. And this gives us some sort of indication of, of how this works. And this has been shown in some of the research, as I said. There's been a, a number, of, number of studies looking at uh, these different areas. But it can also kind of explain why some of our treatments work because basically if, if you've got like a, a lot of blood vessels and little nerve endings coming into this, Ischemic compression or deep massage can kind of milk out this waste metabolites or can even do like a kind of micro stretch even though we're doing a quite big area. It's kind of like a little micro stretch on the point of the trigger point and this kind of relieves the, the area. So we have this effect of one, a micro stretch of the kink and stretching it out, two, removing some of the metabolites and there's also going to be an element of counter irritation to the area. Now, if a, a sarcomere is contracted and sort of overextended, extended, it's going to make the muscle weak and, and a muscle wants to work at its optimum length and it's unable to do that if you have a big sort of lump in the middle of it. Uh, another, again, another version of this is like looking at the, um, which is also a very good tool, and if you can imagine this is a, a muscle. Now these are the sarcomeres. The muscle wants to work basically from its full length and shorten. But if you've got a couple of sarcomeres there, it can't lengthen on its full length because there's basically a pivot point there that are holding it. So this could may, may explain two things. One, why the muscle may feel weak and heavy because it's not working optimally. But also why stretch is not occurring. Because again, I can't stretch it completely like that because I've got something here which is kind of holding it. It's a bit like me um, holding a, an elastic band in the middle. So by removing these trigger points we can then sort of allow the muscle to work optimally and then later on maybe stretch will be more useful. So the idea of this uh, vicious cycle, this is the central pillar of the integrated hypothesis or the expanded integrated hypothesis trigger point formation. Um, so basically as t trigger points get irritated they become is easier to irritate and these contracting bunch of sarcomeres produce a lot of tissue fluid 
um, waste products of sarcomeres which met metabolically irritate the molecules. This leads to pain and other symptoms exacerbating the trigger points even more and this is called the metabolic energy crisis.